Following on from my last series about Malta, this series looks at some places a lot closer to home within Northern Ireland. As the only one of the countries that makes up the United Kingdom that I hadn't visited before, I was especially keen to see this British part of the Emerald Isles. Ireland as a whole has had a pretty turbulent past, with Northern Ireland in particular only having seen an end to the troubles that affected the region, and in particular the capital city of Belfast, just over 20 years ago. One of the many significant events that shaped and formed this island's history was the arrival of the Anglo-Normans, and this video looks at two castles that symbolise the Norman contribution to the story of Northern Ireland. Within six years of the Norman conquest of England, the Normans had established firm control of England, began an invasion of Wales, and had brokered a peace treaty with Scotland rather than having attempted an all-out invasion of the typically difficult to beat Scottish clans. Despite their strong ambitions for conquest, Ireland was not interfered with by their new neighbours for another century. In 1169, the first of the Anglo-Normans began to arrive in Ireland, and through typical Norman tradition, it was only a matter of time before they started marking their territory with castles. The town of Carrickfergus is a short distance away from Belfast, and has good transport links to the capital city. Having had the benefit of a naturally protected harbour thanks to a rocky crag that jutted out into the sea, the town flourished after the Norman knight John de Courcy decided that this raised position would be an excellent site to establish local control of the area. Behind me here is Carrick Fergus Castle, which is one of the best maintained Norman castles in all of Ireland, and it guarded a very important stretch of water that leads to Belfast. Unfortunately, as this is a time of Covid, the castle is closed, so I'm just going to have to do as good a tour of the outsides as I can. Yep, that's right, closed. At the time of my visit in August 2021, Northern Ireland was experiencing one of the worst infection rates in the whole of the United Kingdom, so I was pretty surprised when I got back at all without catching one of those spiky football virus things. Right then, let's see what we can find from the outside. From 1177, the castle was constructed consisting of an inner ward, a small bailey, and a square keep. The keep is four stories high, and if access would have been possible, it would have provided me with a great lookout position. As you can see behind me, it commands a very spectacular view across the sea, and is a perfect defensive location for guarding Belfast. Okay, I've made a bit of a mistake there. After recording that, I found out Carrickfergus predates Belfast as a major settlement. Belfast was only established as a town in 1613, whereas Carrickfergus had been an important settlement for over 400 years by that point. It was this importance that Carrickfergus held which meant it was besieged at different times in history by the Scots, the Irish and the English. Even the French managed to capture the town in 1760, only for their invasion fleet to be defeated by the Royal Navy shortly afterwards. In an effort to deal with these ever-changing threats, ways in which the castle was modified can easily be seen from the outside. From 1230, an outer ward was added to the castle to fully encompass the rocky crag, and a massive stone gatehouse was built to defend the only part of this castle that faced the land. This gatehouse incorporated strong wooden doors and a portcullis, and a banner depicting the coat of arms of Hugh de Lacey proudly flies above. Other alterations can be seen from the many brick outlined gun ports, where cannons would have been placed to provide defensive fire. These were knocked through the original Norman curtain walls, with some of them seemingly having been sealed up again at some point. The majority of these cannon batteries located on the wall facing the sea, which would have provided a formidable threat to any hostile ships. A more dramatic modification is the inclusion of this slanted track, which was used to bring supplies directly to the inner castle. By the Napoleonic Wars, the castle was used as a prison, 
and saw a number of other military uses up until 1928, when the castle's ownership was transferred to the government for preservation. The town of Carrickfergus itself is worth exploring further as well, especially the 12th century St Nicholas's Church and the town walls which were completed in 1610. Another one of the Anglo-Norman castles of Northern Ireland is this one, which is Dundrum Castle, located in County Down. Built around the exact same time as Carrickfergus, Dundrum Castle commands a view from the top of the hill over the town below. It is another of de Courcy's castles constructed to control the province of Ulster, however de Courcy did not have long to enjoy it, as he was expelled from Ulster by Hugh de Lacy in 1203. De Lacy's new appointment as the Earl of Ulster did not last long however, and in 1210 Dundrum Castle was besieged by King John. It was following this capture of the castle that the large round keep was built, thought to have been constructed by Welsh stonemasons, as the round keeps were popular within Wales around this time. After having changed hands a number of times throughout the centuries, Dundrum was left to ruins by the parliamentarians in 1652, after the castle was no longer acquired as a garrison. Exploring the castle today will require quite a bit of imagination to picture what the fortifications would have originally looked like back in its heyday. However, some of the walls are quite substantial. From the gatehouse, an excellent view can be taken in of the Mourn Mountains in the distance. There is also the ruins of a 17th century mansion, which was built by the Blundell family who originally purchased the land in 1636. Be sure to check out the Visitors Centre as well, which illustrates the history of this castle in a comic book style with action-packed scenes. The Norman conquest of Ireland brought about massive changes to society, as the Anglo-Normans asserted their authority through the construction of strongholds such as Carrickfergus and Dundrum Castle. By the 14th century, however, numerous events weakened the power of the Anglo-Normans, so much so that as a twist of irony, Ireland was reinvaded under the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, as they had drifted far too far away from loyalties to the English crown. The rest of Ireland is scattered with these fortifications, and many of the biggest and best of these can be found south of the border, but that would have to be a journey for another time. If you did enjoy this video then please consider liking and following my channel for more. I'll have more from Northern Ireland as well as many more videos to come. So until next time, see you around.